Welcome everybody. I'm making this video about King Rune KLP1. This is a new generation 3D printer, so it's a Core X wire, and it is quite fast. It is fitting to my old computer collection because I need several times to print broken things for old computers. So after using it for three months, I can see not just the bright, but the dark side of this printer. Before I ordered this printer, I could find only official or short-term reviews, so I was not really aware of the cons of this printer. Don't get me wrong, this is not a negative video, so I didn't want to pull it down. So this is just to make a more realistic picture about this printer. When it arrived, I was really happy and started to unbox. It is very easy to set up. If you check out others' video, I won't do that. You just need to unscrew a few fixing screws, and you need to add the panels. This is where I faced the first issue because one of the panels were broken. It is still broken because I was not able to manage with the support to replace it. And here is the first issue I faced with because let's say there is no support. I've wrote them several times, finally I gave up because uh, they responded, let's say, just translated with uh, Google Translate. They do not speak English or I don't know why. They were not able to check the pictures I sent over. Practically, I got no support for the printer. Then I started to use the printer, which is quite easy because you just turn it on. There is a short description. You need to calibrate it and then select the slicer and print. I'm, I'm really satisfied with the prints because it is fast. The quality is okay. Okay, it required some tuning. There were just basic configurations. And then I switched over to Orca, but it's fine. If you start to print with a new printer, you need to do that. Maybe except Bamboo where the slicer and everything is so integrated, but never mind. I do not say it is a bad thing. It is working really fine. But then after a few weeks, several things started to annoy me. The first one is the residue screen, which is behind the door. Of course, I started to control over the network, which is really nice because it is just clipper based. But what was really annoying is they use the plexi, it's just dark. So if you start to print, you cannot see what is happening inside the chamber. If you open it and you're printing something like ABS, which can warp, then, then it is, you can see it's, it's, it is really disappointing. If you open it, it can warp. If you do not open, you cannot see what is happening inside. Beside this one, there is also no light, so LEDs or any kind of light, it would be possible to see. The second annoying thing was, when I started to print with closed lids, then it was scratched with cables coming out from the head. There is not enough space between the top door and the head for the cables. Here we are talking about an addition of 5 centimeters or so. And then I started to face again with the support, because the fans started to have some noise. I think it is because the, the bearing was not so fine, so it touched somehow the housing, so I had to replace it. But again, I reported it to the support, there was no answer, or no real answer, just Google translated something-ish, an answer to fulfill the SLA, or I don't know. But since the those fans are just really cheap, few dollars, not a big deal to order a new one and replace. And here I faced with, a, with another thing, the cabling. It's very close to the head. Itself is very compact, very lightweight. Maybe because of that, wires are going so close to the nose. I mean, the distance between the, what you are printing and between those cables. And if something goes wrong, then it can simply just rip off those cables. Yeah, so it can, it can ruin the head itself. All in all, after around six weeks, I started to, let's say, pimp up the printer. I think I reached the status where since the printer, the base was really good and cheap, right now I'm really satisfied with the solutions. On the other hand, if someone is newbie, well, I wouldn't recommend. But I could do that because I'm able to do that, so it was not a big pain for me to design those elements and install all the stuff. So what I did was, first of all, printed the frame to the top, that way the lid is not touched by those cables. I also incorporated another important thing, because the original spool holder is at the back side of the printer. I didn't know who designed that, but this is, this is really silly. If you want to replace the filament, you have to crawl to the back and so it is painful. I printed this uh, frame on the top and I incorporated 
a way to move the filament sensor and the spool holder to the left side. This combination really helped me a lot. Easier to operate the whole stuff, especially because I don't need to crawl to the back when I'm replacing the filament. And if you're printing multicolor stuff, then well, you can see that this is really important. The next step was uh, very simple. I installed an LED stripe inside the chamber. So right now there is no need to open the door if I want to see what is happening inside. But here I need to mention that so the space is very limited inside. So it was hard to find space for the cable. And when I made the wiring, I flipped over the whole printer because I had to find power source for the LED stripe. So that way I could see the all the electronics and, and the control part of the printer. And then I realized why the whole printer is so noisy. They installed one fan, but not the standard normal 25 millimeters, but this is kind of half size. So it is spinning faster than necessary and it is not PVM controlled. It is spinning full speed ahead. And because of that, this is, yeah, well, quite noisy. It is hard to replace because there is not enough space. Again, this is the making it small, but maybe a few millimeters here and there. It could have a lot for later upgrades or similar stuff. The last step was to install a camera. But in the previous step, I installed this pool on the left side, so uh, I had to move the camera to the right side. But the USB port is on the left side, and it is not possible to somehow move inside or hide the cable, so I moved under the 3D printer. And the last, maybe it sounds so dumb, under the 3D printer right now, I have a concrete step stone. It's kind of 25 kilograms, and it's heavy, big, and it's taking care of the, of the vibrations, or a lot of vibrations. Of course, after all these upgrades, I had to recalibrate the printer, but it really helped on the quality. And one more thing for the collaboration, I made a slow motion video. Here you will see why the collaboration is very important. When I was watching, what is happening inside? I was not able to see, but in the video it is, it is visible how the belts are really flipping and vibrating. After talking all the dark side, let me summarize uh, my opinion about this KLP1. The small issues I, I listed and I corrected really bittering the use. The metal frame and the clipper software is really fine. The print quality is really, really fine. But I wouldn't recommend it for somebody who is just starting 3D printing or someone who is just what I take it from the box, set it on the table and just print. The problem is really those small things. So first of all, you have to tune your own settings in the slicer. So the second is the LED and of course the spool on the backside. Those things really if someone just starting to use or just want to use a 3D printer and has no technical knowledge or willingness because it is not necessary to have already but the willingness is, is a must to do that then I wouldn't recommend. So all in all I think the KLP1 is really priced on the knowledge. It has a much lower price compared to for example the Bamboo or the K1 but it has its own quirks uh, you need to take care of. I hope you enjoyed. I'll be back during the Christmas season with how not to build a CNC machine and what to consider because right now I'm struggling with a CNC machine and wish everybody a pleasant Christmas season. Goodbye.